So starting this month, in March of 2021, there's a new requirement coming in for building PWAs. Now, I've got a very basic little website right here. I've just upgraded Chrome to the latest version, version 89. This is in March 2021. And if we check out the What's New tab, you'll see under Lighthouse 7, this is the audit tools, uh, new audits for PWA. Uh, if you want to learn more about this, the learn more link at the bottom here will take you over to the web dev website. And this is where they post all of their uh, links about what are the new things that are coming out in Chrome. So if you ever want to find out what new features are out or what has come out in the past, this has absolutely everything that they've added to Chrome or removed from Chrome. Now we've also got up here in this error message, this is the thing that I'm talking about. This link will take us over here to the Chrome developer site and give a lot more detail about this if you want to really dig into the, the details of it. The thing that has been added is this new test for the fetch listener inside of your service worker. So right now, what I have in my service worker, if I jump over through my main page script, you can see I'm registering my service worker. And in my service worker, I've got listeners for install, for activate, for fetch, and for the message event. Inside of fetch, all I have here is a stub. It's just an empty function to listen for the fetch event. And up until very recently, that was really all that the accessibility test did. So if I come over here into Lighthouse and I run a test for not SEO, but for progressive web app, when I run this report, all it was doing is checking to see, hey, do you have an event listener for fetch? If you did, you pass the requirement. Now, what they're saying is you can't just have an empty fetch request. It's got to be something that actually sends back a valid response. In August this year, when version 93 of Chrome comes out, this is going to become a requirement. Right now it's a warning. In August, this is going to become a requirement. It means inside of the fetch, we actually have to send something back that's going to be valid. So let's do that quickly here. Inside the fetch listener, we're going to need a response with, so we can send back a response. We're going to check in our cache, first of all. This is probably going to be the strategy that you're using. So inside my caches, I'm going to look for something that matches the request. My event object right here, this is the fetch event coming from the browser. So the browser is requesting a file. We're going to get the request object and we're going to search in our cache to see if that file exists, if we've saved it in our cache at some point, whether it was part of the pre-cache or something that we dynamically cached later on. When we get a response back, what we're going to be getting is hopefully some sort of cache response. So we're looking in the cache, seeing if we get the cache response. If we do get it, fantastic. That is the thing that we're going to return. So I'm going to return my cache response. But if I don't have that, I still need to pass something back that's valid. So I'm going to attempt a fetch. And again, we're going to take this ev.request. This is the request that's coming from the browser. I'm going to do a fetch for that. Try to go out on the network and get this thing. And inside of my then, I'm going to have my two functions, one for it worked, one for it failed. Inside the one where it worked, I'm going to have an actual response object. And this is what we are going to return to the browser. That is what is going to pass this test. So we're checking in our cache. If we've got it, we return that thing from the cache. If we don't have it, we're going to do a fetch and then return what comes back from the network. And then if it doesn't, well, not much we can do. We're offline. So if we do get a failure at this point, it means it wasn't in the cache, the thing they asked for. We weren't able to fetch it. We were not online. We have the option at this point, we could take something else from the cache. We could have, let's say inside of here, there could be a 404.html file that we've built. So this is our custom, hey, I don't have it page. We could send that back to the browser if we wanted. 
And if you're looking for more information on that, my service worker series has a video on the caches. If you look uh, at the top there, there's the link for that. All right, and this is what is going to meet that requirement. So you can't just have the fetch listener. You also have to actually respond from the fetch listener with a valid response object, whether it comes from the cache or from actual network request with fetch. And that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.